My brothers and sisters, Allah judges us. Does he have the right to do that? Does Allah have the right to judge us? Yes, he does. Definitely. Why? There is an uncle here from Kashmir who has intrigued me and impressed me from the moment he entered this room. Mashallah. He's eloquent. He can be heard. He speaks so clearly and he has a strong message. Mashallah. Jazakallah khair. You're about the only person I heard. Mashallah. Did you hear that? May Allah bless you and bless all our brothers and sisters in Kashmir and grant them goodness and ease. Amen. So Allah has the right to judge us. He will judge us. He says he has kept an entire day to judge us. And that day will be very, very long. Who knows how long that day will be? It's duration is equivalent to 50,000 years. Thank you, sister. 100% right. Spot on. 50,000 years of the years of this world that will be one day that day Allah will judge everyone and Allah will issue the judgment in a way that those who deserve the goodness because of Allah's mercy but because they tried to achieve the mercy of Allah Allah says we will give you your book the book of what tell me your deeds, your own deeds, what you wrote today in that book, what you wrote yesterday, what you will write tomorrow, all of that. For as long as you haven't changed things and if you did something bad, you can edit, you can cut, delete. You know, when you want to write a book, you look at it and you see and you read and you edit and you go back and you check again and again and you make sure that there are no mistakes. And when you're proud of it, then you can send it to the printers, right? And if it comes back from the printers and you notice a little error and a blunder, what do you do? You have in the second edition, you have a better copy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So your book, the one that you have written, Allah says, we will give it to you in your right or your left. As for the one who's going to be given the book in the right hand, may we be from among them. Say Amin. He will be so happy of this work that he has just received the marking of that he will say, Whoa, read my book, guys, read, read, check, check what's happened. Subhanallah. May Allah make us excited in that way in this world and the next. I mean, so Allah says we will judge you. We definitely will. We have the right. And then those who get the book on the left, Oh, I don't even want to go in that direction because you know what is the opposite of goodness. You know what is the opposite of paradise. You know what is the opposite of being extremely happy and excited. And no one wants to be that. But we have a major disaster. What's the disaster? Can I tell you? We are on earth right now where we have people around us who keep judging in a way that distracts us. Don't you agree? People look at you, they judge you. They judge you based on what? Based on your color. They judge you based on your complexion. Sometimes on your height, sometimes on your size, sometimes on your nationality, sometimes perhaps on something. They judge you based on so many things, so much springs to my mind. They judge you based on your sins. People judge you based on your sins. Am I right? You have a person who's, for example, been caught pants down, literally. And you know what? Everybody talks about this person. The whole world embarrasses them. They become suicidal. No one cares. Do you know why? Because that's it. You deserve it. What do you deserve? 
well, you did this sin. They'll tell you it's a punishment. Now you must face the consequences of what the people are going to do and say about you. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, Allah judges you. But he's the only one who never judges based on your sin. Did you know that? You must be surprised. I think he's making a mistake. No. Allah never ever judges you based on your sin. Do you think I'm right? MashaAllah, one yes. May Allah bless you, my brother. Allah judges you based on your repentance. La ilaha illallah. You can have committed sin all your life. Allah says, you know what? Your judgment is not based on that. It's based on your repentance. Did you repent? Did you turn? Did you become a better person? It's not based on your past. People will never forgive the sin you've committed. Even if you've changed your life totally. In most cases, they won't. That's humankind. We're not Ghafoor, we're not Rahim, we're not Wadud. Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Allah is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most kind, the most good, etc., etc. But people are not. They will throw you out based on one mistake you made. One mistake you make and your entire life comes crumbling because humankind does not forgive. What does Allah say? Allah says, my worshiper, you might pay a little price because the other human beings around you are not merciful. They don't care. But we want you to know we will forgive you. We care. We are here for you. Allah gets so happy when people turn to him. Allah says, we'll wipe out your sins. Allah said, you know what? Let alone wipe out your sins. Whatever sins you've committed, we want to convert them into good deeds on the right side of your scale because you changed your life. Look at you. You're such a lovely person. My brothers and sisters, never ever be let down by your past. Do you know why? It was exactly that. P-A-S-T. Past. That's what it was. Leave your past behind. Forget about it. Subhanallah, people may remind you, people may keep talking about it. Come out of that. Change your company if need be. Divorce yourself from toxic people who might be in your circle of friends. So much so that if it is a spouse who is toxic, Allah allows you to actually come out of it. Subhanallah. I know it's easier for a man but I want to tell you, I challenge the scholars always to make it easy, easier for the sisters as well. And it's the duty of those whom Allah has placed in leadership to assist the sisters who are going through struggles. I know of people who are absolutely suicidal and nobody's helping them. Nobody reaches out to them to understand what they're going through. When you go to someone and you say, you know what? And I've heard this, may Allah forgive us. Someone says, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I've been sexually abused by my own father. That's what someone said. And I went to a scholar and he told me, what do you think he said? Have sabr. My brother, you got it. Have sabr. Don't worry. That's your father. Jannah with your father. Don't worry. My brother, my sister, this is where we're failing. These people need your help. The minimum you can say is, you know what? What he did is totally wrong, totally unacceptable. He's a criminal. If need be, you can report him and you should be reporting him to higher authority where he can be penalized and perhaps jailed and perhaps shamed as well. Because do you know what? That is insulting. Heaven lies at the feet of your mother is actually a statement that is sometimes used as religious blackmail to keep the person under the spell of a mother. When the mother is toxic and really a nasty, evil person who won't even be, subhanallah, 
who won't be your door to paradise not at all but this is the case of some in the case of the majority my brothers and sisters inshallah we hope we can be decent parents to our children and we hope that we have decent parents who don't abuse us and then i call it religious blackmail that means you show someone a verse of the quran or a hadith and you use it to justify the sin and the evil that you're perpetrating against them which is unacceptable husbands do it too it's a pity the wives don't find those verses but wallahi they are there the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us khayrukum khayrukum li ahli that impresses me the most and i challenge the men folk to live by it he says the best from amongst you are those who are the best to your spouses subhanallah best to your wife your family members who from amongst us can say we are the best may allah make it such that people bear witness that we are really good people so my brothers and sisters sometimes people are crying for help and assistance and we don't we don't help them we don't reach out to them we have aid organizations such as human relief and so many others doing a lot of good work across the globe subhanallah what are they doing reaching out to people in need in a different way every country that an aid organization visits sometimes is affected by something uniquely theirs it's a problem sometimes it's a flood sometimes it's an earthquake sometimes it's a mudslide sometimes it is a tsunami sometimes it might just be a, whatever else it may be but some form of a disaster the outbreak of a disease may allah grant us all cure and protect us those who have any illness and sickness may allah grant you cure amen those who are struggling i said it yesterday i'm saying it again today those who have been affected by this corona virus that has overtaken the globe may allah grant them cure may allah open their doors may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard the rest of us no matter what faith they belong to what nationality they are where they are from what their color is what their size is may allah grant them cure say amen we won't judge it's wrong for me to say that was a punishment subhanallah did someone come and dish it out to you to say tell them it's a punishment punishment go tell them let them know is that what happened not at all subhanallah you could be affected by it and so could i yes it is a reminder from allah it may well perhaps be a warning from allah a reminder etc it is an it is a disease a virus that is taking over the globe not looking at who you are when the tsunami happened people were saying that's a punishment and i said what about those who died in the masjid while they were in salah and the others who died while they were fulfilling their re or reciting the quran and some died while they were engaged in the dhikr of allah what about them oh i didn't think of that ah, you see leave it to allah to decide it may have been their means of entry into paradise right wouldn't it be considered as a muslim the best death to die while you're in prostration while you're in sujood one of the best deaths who wants to die in sujood my hand is up put your hands down to do that you have to read your salah more often have you heard what one of the youngsters told me i said it in one of my talks the guy says i want to die in sujood i said well you must read salah he says no if i read my salah if that dua is accepted then the possibilities of me dying are greater i'm like gosh you're dealing with people with a brain that's thinking a bit too fast man so he's saying if allah accepts my dua to die in sujood then i'll i'll start doing that sujood in about 20 50 60 years astaghfirullah that's obviously a stupid way of looking at things but what is meant here is we become closer to allah allah will open allah will guide allah will give and grant it's allah my brothers and sisters what i wanted to say today and i want to repeat it today allah judges you based on your repentance not on your sin allah says your past 
can actually become the biggest blessing no matter how negative it was. When? You just turn to Allah. That is between you and Allah. In this world, like I said, people won't forgive you. You made a mistake, one mistake, two mistakes. People will actually see you go all the way down the tunnel and they'll cheer you on. That's how people are. Do you know why? It's Allah, the Almighty. He shows you He is the only one. That's it. Who will be with you. The only one. There comes a time when people leave you. Your friends might leave you. Your family might leave you. It happens. It happens. Those you never expected would actually distance themselves. Don't get depressed. It's Allah telling you they've all gone. It's just you and I. Come. Subhanallah. Allah is here for you. He will always be here. He grants you elevation. If you take a look at the books of history and the scriptures, the Old Testament, the Quran, whatever else it may be, you will find that there was a period of time of hardship after which the ease came. Take a look at the story of the Prophet Joseph. May peace be upon him. They had hardship. They had drought. Did it last forever and ever? How many years did it last? Tell me. Someone said seven years, didn't they? Correct. You deserve a medal, my sister. I think I heard seven years. Did someone say seven years at the back? Mashallah. You deserve another medal. The only person interacting here, man. And after that, Allah gave them ease. So Allah does not keep you down all the time. Don't lose hope. While you're down, just bear it. You will be down for a while. I promise you in a year, two years, three years, five years, seven years. Do you know what will happen? Within those years, your life will change to the degree that you will look back and say, Whew, I was about to give up at one stage. I know of business people, people who are unwell, people who are going through medical problems, you know, Family matters. Sometimes you're going through a divorce and you know what? You went through it once. It was so painful. You desperately do not want to go through it again. But unfortunately, it's coming. Let it happen. Let it be. No problem. Divorce is never the end of the world. It might just be the beginning of your life. I went through a divorce myself many, many years back. In fact, when the brother earlier was saying, I've been listening to Mufti Menk for about 15 years. Did you hear him say that? The first time I actually said, gosh, I'm old, man. Mashallah, it's true. It's very true, brother. I kicked off in 1999. That's 21 years ago. Subhanallah. My kids are in their 20s. Some of them are married. You wouldn't even believe that. And I'm not lying, by the way. Okay. So Subhanallah, it's amazing, my brothers and sisters, how there will come a time when ease will come through. You go through a divorce. You're not the first person. You will never be the last one. It may not be your first divorce. You might go through it again and again. And who knows the third, the fourth person you're going to get to through marriage is going to be, wow, the king of your dreams. Subhanallah, it can happen. And then you can let the other three know that by the way, anyway, you don't need to do that. Okay. But man is such that when we're going through the issue, it's the end of the world. It's not just ride this for now. You know, the waves are coming in. Just ride the wave for now. And you lay low for a little while. Thank Allah. Develop your relationship with Allah. A day will come when you will have the last laugh. And always, as they say, he who laughs last, laughs the best. You have the best laugh. That's a good concept. It's true. It's actually true. So my brothers, you're going through financial hardship. Don't worry. Count the years. How many years? Ah, it's been three solid years. Two more years. How? Two more years? Are you? Before you know it, it's going to be 2022. Done. And please don't come back to me 2023 and say, brother, I'm still waiting. May Allah grant you. It's not. I'm only giving you an example. I'm only giving you an example. It could be before that right and anything those who are not doing well at school the way we shove our opinions down their throats they become suicidal many of the brown parents are guilty of putting so much pressure on their children to get a's i tell my kids you don't need to get an a go to school enjoy yourself thoroughly just make sure you pass come out that's all enjoy yourself how many of you after you crossed 
you know, school, was it extremely important for you? That people asked you, sorry, when you were in grade five or grade six, did you get A's? Did they ever ask you that? It's irrelevant. No one asks you what you got at primary school. Nobody even asks you what you did at O level, to be honest, or A level for that matter. It's irrelevant. The fact that you're now a doctor, they're not going to know that you failed three times before you passed, or they wouldn't allow that scalpel in your hands. Right? Don't worry. That's life. It's Allah's way. The brightest children are not always the most successful on earth. And I want to tell you something else. To prove that your education and your wealth are not necessarily connected. Allah makes some of the wealthiest from amongst us some of the least educated. Do you guys agree? Thank you. So just leave school. Subhanallah. <laughs> no, that's a joke. Okay, that's a joke. That's a joke. But subhanAllah, it's amazing. And this is why, you know what? I really feel hurt when people sometimes see a successful businessman, a person who's doing really well, and then they make an issue out of the fact that this person has not gotten a degree or whatever else, so they cannot marry our daughter. But what was the point of going to school in the first place? To earn a living. This man's earned the living without having gotten that degree. Now what's the problem? Subhanallah. And sometimes he may later on, I come from Zimbabwe, I know of so many school teachers and university lecturers and doctors and lawyers and others who actually have just become businessmen because they need to make ends meet in my country. Wheeling and dealing. You get a guy who's proper qualification and subhanallah, they're just wheeling and dealing because they're making money at least through that wheeling and dealing. It's a scenario that can happen. It has happened. But let's be more realistic. I'm still telling you and I want to encourage you. Work hard, work hard inshallah, as best as you can. And enjoy the days you have. Even if you're at a workplace, things are tough. Enjoy the little bit that you can for now. Make the most of it. It has to be challenging. That's life. Life will be challenging. People will judge you. It's not your fault. It's theirs. It's not you who is sick. It is there. It is them. Who has never made a mistake in their lives? Put up your hands. Almost saw a hand. The sister at the back, mashallah. Wow. Wow, mashallah. Anyway, she's not. She's just teasing us, right? Okay, I want to ask you a, a bigger question than that. So we've made mistakes. Who has never, ever sinned? Put up your hand. No sin, never committed. Not one of us. Not a single one of us. Say that again, uncle. Let's start off with Rasulullah. And you know what? Write the angels. Allah says, They, the angels, they have never, they will never transgress against Allah. They do exactly as they are commanded. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the ability to sin. So I want to let you know the purpose that Allah created us. Do you know what? Worship Him as best as you can and repent because you are going to sin. How do I know that's the purpose? Because before my greatest grandfather and your greatest grandfather, who was by the way the same person, so it makes us really ease. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're related, bro. We are. Who was your greatest grandfather? What was his name? The sister who was saying never ever, the one who's recording, okay? Who was your greatest grandfather? What was her name? What was his name? Don't pretend like you don't have a voice. Say it loudly. Adam, subhanallah. Did you hear? Same man. You want to ask anyone else? Same man. Same man, we related. Come on. My brothers and sisters, let me explain. Before Allah put him onto the earth, Allah made sure something happened. What was it? Allah told him, Don't approach this tree. Don't eat from this fruit. 
Otherwise, you will be a wrongdoer. The only thing you're not supposed to do is this. Imagine you're in Jannah and Adam alayhi salam was in a special paradise that was created for this particular purpose. So it's not the same paradise we're going to be going to. It's a special paradise, a special garden that he was created in. And Allah told him, you know what? Do whatever you want, you and your spouse, Eve, do what you want. And I tell you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to this man and his spouse, his wife, to my greatest grandfather, Allah told my greatest grandfather, do whatever you want here. Eat whatever you like. There's nothing prohibited besides one fruit. Guess what happened? Granddad blew it. Allahu Akbar. It's a fact. That's what happened. He blew it. He actually did the only thing that he wasn't supposed to do. The only thing. Did Allah judge him? No. Do you think he's not going to make it to paradise? To Jannah? No. He will. Allah chose him to be the first of the species. He committed a sin. It was considered a major sin. It's the only thing wrong. And Allah says, you know what I love? I just wanted to create a creature who sins and repents. Repents. It's the repentance. So if you have sinned, you repent. What is repentance? When you say, oh Allah, forgive me. It is a massive act of worship because... You're acknowledging that Allah is the owner of forgiveness. Allah is the owner of goodness. He's the owner of punishment. He's the owner of everything. You are acknowledging that by merely saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. That's why he loves it so much. Why would I say, forgive me when I haven't wronged you? Why would I say, forgive me when I don't believe I've done anything wrong? The minute you say, forgive me, I believe I did something wrong. And I believe, you know what? You're the one who's going to forgive me. So I'm asking you, forgive me. The mere fact that you said, forgive me, you're a superhero. You have acknowledged how many people today don't acknowledge their sins. They don't acknowledge that they were wrong. So my brothers, my sisters, remember this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted that repentance to happen before this man was sent onto the earth and therefore we're all on earth what you need to know is allah taught him that look you're gonna do wrong when you do wrong just repent when you repent we wipe out the wrong that's what we want if allah wanted creatures who only did right he already has the angels he has them if allah allah has creatures who only do wrong shaitan is there we're in the middle subhanallah we're neither angels nor are we devils you see what I mean? The worst from amongst us might be called little devils, but they're not. In actual fact, they're human beings. There is hope for everyone. The worst from amongst us, there is hope for. And the best from amongst us must not become so proud and arrogant because you know what? No one knows when he can falter or she can falter. That's why I don't judge people. You might see someone and we have a bad habit of judging people based on what they look like. You know what? Oh, look at this. Look at this brother. Astaghfirullah. He's got all these tattoos and he's got all. Why are you judging? You don't know anything. You have no clue what has gone on in his or her life. You don't even know the circumstance. Are you prepared to know? Are you prepared to help them? No, you're not. Do you know why? You need help yourself. That's what it is. If we knew the stories of those we judged, we'd be embarrassed. We would never be able to assist them. We would, would not be able to live in their situation. We wouldn't survive. They're surviving. They just scrape through. And Allah knows that. I want to tell you something. When a person abstains from sin or when a person does a good deed, the reward of abstention from sin and the reward of doing the good deed is not always the same. It depends on your circumstances. If you're going to fulfill Salatul Fajr, yes, you will get a reward of fulfilling that early morning prayer. But if you're living in England at a time when it is freezing cold and, and it's so difficult to get up because the night is so short and it's very, very difficult because I'm so tired and you still get up and you still use that cold water and you still do that Fajr for Salah over and above the mere fulfillment of the Salah you get a massive reward 
more than those who perhaps have it all beautiful mashallah you know you sat you had a good night's sleep your eye opened so mashallah you got up you also did your salah who had the greater reward wallahi the one whom it was much more difficult for them to have gotten up they get a reward beyond the mere fulfillment of the prayer you follow what i'm saying the same applies about a sin you go to a country where everything is you know let me give you an example example i'm giving you a real life example go to medina munawwara right you find people are covered mashallah you know people are respectful no alcohol is available and you know there is no apparent sin that is just happening all in front of you if you were to sin there allah says himself that you know what it's a multiplied sin because where it's not available where it is not even there where it is not even in front of you and you went around hunting for it you went around to do it and on top of that it's a blessed place it's a sacred place and you did that it's multiplied allah says i'll still forgive you if you seek the forgiveness but for purposes of this example i'm giving you it's a bigger sin right and then if you have a sin dangling in front of you every single day morning and night your friends and your brothers and your sisters and all those around you and you fell once trust me do you know what allah knows you did better than some of those who might have abstained from sin where the sin was not available i remember once i had a friend coming from medina to cape town many years ago and he told me you guys are saints and i said what do you mean we were walking on the beach and he says look at you you're not even noticing what i can see i say what is it a lot of the nudity subhanallah don't ask me what we were doing there it was just a beach and we didn't notice because why you see that every day it's no big deal i mean if you just look down carry on doing and this guy's like you know subhanallah i couldn't control myself i can't you know what's going on and he says you guys are saints the sin is dangling in front of you meaning the the chance to commit the sin You know I I don't want to call anyone filthy because to be honest with you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who decides how people will die that you may be involved in something displeasing to Allah today but tomorrow you might earn paradise prior to myself when when you're teaching what's right and wrong from an Islamic perspective yes you know and yes I know that's there we can't change that but when it comes to what a person is going through right now in their lives be careful how you speak to them we are it's our duty to give them uplifting words to encourage them rather than to knock them down and hit them into the hole that they were trying to come out of you get the point very interesting this is the deen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam always spoke to people in a way that empowered even if they were down in the dumps even if they looked so negative abu jahal was the worst enemy wallahi every time he showed a small interest in talking to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rushed to him and spoke with utmost respect and dignity whoa whoa yet allah says he was the firaun of this whole ummah later on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam confirmed that he was equivalent to the pharaoh of the ummah and perhaps even worse so when something is dangling in front of you the chances of sinning are dangling and you don't do you know what has happened you've actually proven to allah that your connection with allah is far stronger or it's developing it's becoming stronger in the case of a person for example and i know another realistic example a person who's trying to quit a bad habit you're trying to quit you can think of whatever bad habit right you're trying to quit i know people telling me you know i'm hooked on to i'm addicted to pornography i'm trying to quit and the guy says well i was okay for 2 weeks and then i just fell you know what my brother you did well 2 whole weeks don't let the one little slip make you lose the gaining of 2 whole weeks keep it going keep it going get up again and keep now it must be 4 weeks 6 weeks i'm not encouraging you to break it at 6 weeks but if you can break that record of the 2 weeks you've done well haven't you but people won't look at it that way because why they are not merciful they are not ghafur and rahim they don't care for you they won't reach out to you youngsters on drugs if when it's your own child you know what it feels like when it's the child of others that's a gonna that's an out he's totally out astaghfirullah keep them away do the, you making matters worse at times 
it's tricky because while you're protecting yourself and perhaps your children and maybe others, you still need to help this person. When you see someone sin, you know where the ummah has gotten to today? We are so excited to expose them. That's the ummah. Even the pious from amongst us, the so-called pious from amongst us, we're excited to expose, not realizing, you know what? You should be excited to help. You should be excited to assist, excited to bring them out of that hole they're in. But man judges you based on your sin. Allah judges you based on your repentance. So what should we be doing if we're good Muslims? You repent to Allah. You help people come out of their mess so that they can get to that repentance. Rather than judge them based on the sin, you can say, you know what? Like they say, every saint has a past, subhanAllah. And every sinner has a future. I'm sure you've heard that. You might have a few saints who really may not have such bad things. I mean, you know, when you say sin, we've all sinned. But if you were to see the magnitude of the sins, it differs from person to person based on many factors. Still, don't get excited. Whenever you see someone being exposed, number one, it could be a lie. I know of a real life case two weeks back in South Africa where innocent people were being accused of something that I knew immediately. This was definitely not them. Absolutely impossible. I thank Allah I was able to reach out to the person involved and just express my solidarity. Say, brother, I stand firmly behind you. Whatever you need from me, done. What? Yes, don't believe this rubbish. Subhanallah. Number one. Number two is even if it is true in the case of other things. This particular one, I know it wasn't. But in the case of other things, even if it is true, shouldn't you as a true believer be, ex be excited about trying to help them? trying to let them come out of that mess that they're in. The Prophet ﷺ tells Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu something we keep repeating. Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrun laka min umrin na'am. Wallahi if Allah uses you to guide one person, it's better for you than the most valuable of red camels. Which means... The S350D, subhanallah, in our words, Mercedes Benz. It's better than that. Guide one person. I see you guys are not fans of Mercedes. It's okay, don't worry. I'm not either. Mashallah, mashallah. The brother saying you have one downstairs. It's not mine, brother. <laughs> I drive an old Toyota. Toyota Camry 2007. That's my car, by the way. Alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, I tell you, let's learn to empower each other. We have a twofold problem as well. One is, while we are being told to empower each other, we need the power ourselves. Because in many cases, we're struggling with our own struggles. How am I going to give you help when I need help myself? I tell you what Allah teaches us. Kana Allahu fi awnil abdi. Allah continues to help his slave for as long as that person is involved in helping another person. No matter what your circumstances are, get up and help someone else. See Allah help you. Help another. They could be whoever. Look at the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about the reward of someone who assisted a dog and the other one who helped a little cat and a kitten and someone else. Subhanallah. Imagine what is the reward of someone who helps a fellow human being. Subhanallah. Human. The kindness when your heart is good, when you're not selfish, when you're not jealous, when you don't have envy, when you don't belittle people, when you don't laugh and scoff at people, change your life. Allah will empower you. But when you belittle people, when you laugh, when you scoff, when you expose, Allah will expose you one day, perhaps in a much more embarrassing way. Wait for the day. Wait for it. It's coming. I guarantee you it's coming unless you repent, you turn to Allah. And all this I've said is from the hadith. The Prophet says, whoever covers the faults of another, Allah will cover their faults. Whoever helps someone, Allah will help them. Whoever has empowered someone, Allah will empower them in this world and the next. And so many different narrations of the Prophet I remember seeing a beggar, 
not too long ago again in Johannesburg where there was a lady who didn't have one leg and she was begging and a security guard from across the road who just had been given a tip by someone who you know who was leaving the car by car he ran across and he gave her a green note green note is 10 rands equivalent to perhaps 50p here right he gave her and he said that's for you sister and he ran back and i watched this because i was waiting the traffic light was red and i said subhanallah the percentage that this man gave this woman he must have been seeing her every day without a leg begging and he's there he's got a job and he's a security guard but he's not a rich man but percentage wise what he gave was something huge look and i said ya allah help that man no matter what help that man whatever difficulties he is going through help him guide him grant him goodness and assist him the same applies to all of us you help someone allah will help you my brothers my sisters i want to end off in the same way that i started by telling you remember allah judges you and he is the only one who has the right to judge you but he judges you not based on your sin based on your repentance if that repentance has come through the sins are wiped out never to be spoken about again you'll never be reminded by allah never ever that hey but one day you sinned never allah's not like us never allah says we wiped it out the angels forgot the books have not don't have it at all no sign of it no trace of it no hack no hack on earth that would get you back to those to 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 you know the embarrassment of those sins so i pray we can empower each other if you're going through difficulty or hardship my brothers my sisters may allah be with you don't worry it's just a few days a year a two years perhaps a little bit more a little bit less allah has blessings in the situation and condition that he's kept you in that you need to search for look for them see how did my life change in a good way come back to allah turn to him Remember him. He has empowered you in so many ways. Look at those who are in a worse condition than yours. I, I say to people, when you look at war zones and you see bombs dropping on people and you see, for example, the weather is against them. It's freezing. It's ice. They have no clothes. They have no accommodation. They have no food. They have nothing. They have no family members. They don't know anyone. They are standing all alone. Then you can tell me you have a massive problem. Do you hear what I'm saying? If that's not the case, trust me. You're in so much of goodness. You're about to have a scrumptious meal here at Saffron. Mashallah. Trust me. How many of you have been here before? Put up your hand. Uh, I'd say about a third of the crowd. Mashallah. You know what to expect, right? I was telling the brothers yesterday. Don't dig too deep into the starters. Looks like a main dish. It's only a starter. And then when you're done and you're full, suddenly the main meal comes in. I really don't know what there is today, but when it comes in, you better have space. Subhanallah. Because when we're greeting each other at the end there, we don't want burping to happen. You've got to say, Assalamu Alaikum. That's the way we greet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all.